Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. So Randy Caldwell is here to make sweet music with us on iOS. There are known unknowns, there are unknown knowns, and then there's solitaire. And do you want to swap vases? Yes! All right, all that and more on iOS Today. iOS Today is brought to you by Texture, the mobile app that lets you access the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere, using your phone or tablet. For your free trial, visit texture.com slash iOS. And by PillPack, a full-service pharmacy that combines personalized service, convenient packaging, and modern technology to make your life easier. Visit PillPack.com slash twit to save $20 on vitamins and OTCs when you transfer your prescriptions. And by Squarespace. Squarespace is the simplest way to create a beautiful website or cover page for your portfolio, your business, your online store. Enter the offer code iOS today and you'll get 10% off. Squarespace, you should. iOS Today is on the air. Yeah. Megan Maroney, Leo Laporte. Hello, yep. how are you? You're Leo, I'm Megan, for now. We may not always be this way, though. A little later on, we're mm -hmm. going to swap faces. Mm -hmm. We are. Today, though, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, something Apple did last week that made a big difference for musicians mm -hmm. on the iPad. Yes, and we don't make music. <laughs> I don't, I try. I try. I try to make beautiful music with Megan, but she refuses me at every turn. <laughs> so I called up Serenity Caldwell from iMore and said, could you come on and tell us how this works and how you did it and show us the music that you made? Serenity Caldwell, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's always fun to uh, to be on a Twitch show. So Apple did two things. One, which is kind of unprecedented, they kind of snuck out a little app mm -hmm. called Music Memo. Which it was did. just like out of nowhere, no one planned it. They didn't have a, you know, they didn't announce it. They just, boom, here it is. Uh, and then they updated at this roughly the same time frame, uh, GarageBand, a big update I hear from those who use GarageBand. It's a big mm -hmm. improvement. So let's let's do both. Can we, you want to start with Music Memos? Yeah, I mean, Music Memos was basically, I think, hidden on the heels of the GarageBand for iOS update and the Logic Remote update, where Apple, you know, Apple has been focused on music for a very long time, but I see music memos as addressing, um, as I said, when it first came out to uh, to my editor in chief, to Renee Ritchie of iMore, uh, I said, it's two words, Taylor Swift, uh, <laughs> which is to say that um, Taylor Swift, along with quite a few other uh, prominent musicians has been using vo the voice memos app on the iPhone to record demos. Yes. And in fact, on the 1989 uh, Target release, she even includes some of those early voice yeah. memos as like, these are early tracks that I did off of eight, uh, 1989 uh, that I recorded on my iPhone. Steve Martin uh, worked that way too. I, he told me that uh, he recorded the banjo tracks for his new album. He'd send them to Edie Brickell, who would then write music, mm -hmm. but it was uh, using an iPhone. I think that's really a great way to use the iPhone, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. I think, it's I think so too. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, I mean, I have recorded countless uh, voice memos on my phone Either if I'm practicing, uh, back in my theater days, I would use it to practice lines. So I would record one person's oh, set of clever. lines and then I'd use it to, to go back. Uh, but also for composing quick songs. And I would I used to have voice memos, like I'd have it running for 30, 40 minutes. Wow. And then I'd just like play and free sing to try and get lyrics to come. But when you think about like what that is actually, it's 40 minutes of jamming, fine. And then you're like, maybe there were five I, good ideas in that 40 minutes, like five maybe three or four minutes of usable footage in there. But trying to go through that music memo was very painful because it wasn't, it wasn't easy to export to GarageBand. And from there, that meant you just basically had to hand comb and be like, I think I remember minute 24 being right. good. Uh, music memos addresses that and, and adds a whole bunch of other really, really nice workflow features for musicians. 
and people who are looking to kind of add a little bit of music to their uh, to their drabbles, so well, to speak. Well, and that's the first thing I'd say. I, I would say you don't have to be a musician to use this. No. Mm -hmm. It's it's good if you are. I, Jason Howell made the best he music. He did, yeah. We he just <laughs> got it. And it was like out of nowhere, he made it this really cute. Yeah. Well, I want to hear this. Okay, you want to hear it? it? Yeah, it's not we, as good as yeah. yours. I call it J-Dog Unplugged. That's what I called it. But yeah, it really took him just a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Catch it, huh? I like it. So it loops the dung dung chukka dung Right, like that was just him like, beatboxing or whatever you call so, it. So what you do, I don't got it on here. On, I don't think it's intended for the iPad Pro, but I've got it on here on the iPad Pro. So you tap the circle to start recording. Well, you can t what Serenity was saying, you can tap auto and then it just knows when you're playing and when you're not, right? Whenever music yeah. is detected. So if you're exactly. a musician, that would work well, but for me... Yeah, you can control it. Like if you just... <laughs> Yeah, so you just, off. Serenity, you, so that's, I see what you're saying. So the way you used voice memo, you would do a lot of just uh, vamping. This will just record the... minute file. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Whereas with music memos, you have that beautiful little auto button. So um, actually, I used it when I was putting together my article for iMore, where I played, I have my ukulele, right? And I, I love that thing for just messing around. And I would play like three little chords um, and then another another set of three chords and another set of three chords and every time I paused for a, a good chunk of time where I'd like play those three chords and then I'd stop and I'd think of like diff three different chords, it would separate those into separate idea files. So oh. basically any time that you stop playing and start playing again, it creates an entirely separate file. So you know what was the good, you know, the good right. vamping and the bad vamping because it's all separated instead of having to listen through one 40 minute epic. Now you have like, 10, 20 little pieces that you can go back and individually grab and say, oh yeah, this is the right file. I can send this immediately to GarageBand and start working on it. So I, I guess I kind of misunderstood. I, I thought, oh, you press this button and you start singing a line. Mm-hmm. It'll record that. It'll record that. Whoops. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> and, you tap it. And then you can play it back. And and then it'll record that. And then you could add guitar or drum. Record that. It'll record. And it would loop. And yeah, and you can trim out that. Yeah, I probably should right trim out the the extra stuff. Absolutely. So you can do that manually if you want. The auto version is a is a different thing. So when you first record your first little snippet, you can see it on the bottom there where you where you see like my idea five, and it shows your waveforms. It even shows A sharp minor, C sharp minor, F sharp, A sharp, D and A. I didn't even know I was singing in tune. So it's what essentially what those are is those are actually backing chords for the bass. If you notice, you have that little bass. Yeah, that Got little bass it. icon and that little drums icon. So right. it's giving you potential backing chords. Right. Now, if you're playing an actual musical instrument, for instance, I was playing my ukulele and I was playing, I think, D minor and um, and B flat. Yeah. It was able to tell and automatically recognize uh, much the way that the third party app Capo does with music. Oh, yeah. this is this is D minor and this is B flat so that the bass was playing the same notes. But when you're singing, that's a little bit harder. And so it, it tries to match either your speaking voice or your singing voice to a tone that it thinks is complementary with uh, what you're singing, so essentially. So it's, it's not giving me information about what I sang, but something that, that will yeah, play. Yeah, I mean, match. sometimes if, you're, if you have perfect pitch, it will give you information about what you just sang. Uh, but if you're just singing, it's right. going to try and match it as closely as possible. Can I then add another clip or am I just stuck with this? Yeah, so you're just, so that's my one kind of, my one little beef with music memos is yeah. that you are stuck to the one clip and right. you can add automatic bass backing and automatic um, automatic it's, drum mapping. Yeah. So when you tap on it like that, you've brought it up into the full sphere. Now this right. is where it gets really cool. So you've got your full uh, your full idea where you can trim it, yeah, right. exactly like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and you just use the edit handles the way you would normally. Um, and then once you finish trimming it, you can do all sorts of more things um, with your bass and your drums. So if you long tap on the bass or the drums at the bottom, uh -huh. um, it will bring up this little this nice little pop up overview. So you can change the diff the kind of bass if you want an electric bass to play, and uh, just like with GarageBand, it has these little music boxes where you can slide to make right. the, the bass loud, complex, simpler, quiet. Uh, same thing with the drums. You can choose between two kits and three different kind of drum sounds as well as this four. It's and pretty simple, though. These are these yeah. are loops, but there's only two of them. And 
Exactly. Yeah. They're much they're much simpler loops than you would get in say GarageBand. It's designed primarily to give you the feel of a song without it's actually a making section. a complete song. Yeah. Exactly. So but let it, me see really what happens. Cool. Yeah. And, the, and you can, in real time, hear what yeah. different things might sound like. You have simple, complex, quiet, loud. I wonder if I can drown Leo out. That might be the best thing to do at this point. <laughs> so obviously, a little musical talent yeah. would help with this kind of thing. And you can change the timing also, like whether it's you three can. quarters time. How do I do that? So top left, right under my idea copy, yeah. is the time time signature. So you can change your tempo, mm -hmm. and it will automatically speed up your tune. It'll also change the time signature between three four 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 and six eight. Right. And you can also change the downbeat I love of that. The drums. That's cool. Yeah. So, so what I would suggest is actually pl pressing play on your on your sound yeah. clip and then live changing the downbeat. Or this or the tempo. Yeah. That's really cool. This is a great way to kind of learn what all these different little uh, musical uh, terms are as well. If you, you know. Yeah, my boys play the trumpet and they played it just to see, oh, like it's, you know, there's the note that I was playing. Like you can tell. I think it works better with chords. But they had fun with it, with the trumpet too. It stores these on iCloud, which is really nice, mm -hmm. right? So you, you're never going to lose them. And it's really easy. What I love about it is, okay, so I created this uh, on, on iMore. I did this piece called "I Created a Vo uh, you know a song out of music memos in 30 minutes," which we will I did. Play the song, and, but no spoilers. We we'll should play it, play it yeah, because well, so you've heard what I can do with it. But let's hear what somebody but, who knows but what they're doing. But then you put it into GarageBand it. after. Yeah. Right? So okay. what I actually did on SoundCloud, I have three separate files. I have the original ukulele chords that I played into music memos. I have the secondary layer, which is that bass, that those drums that we were just playing with Leo. And then I have the layer where I um, combined it. I dragged it to GarageBand. I sent it to GarageBand. And then from there, I was able to overlay some vocals tracks. So if we play um, the first, the first. Yeah, let's hear the, the just, is, just the yeah, music memos only. version. So yeah. not that one, but uh, the one right above it. Yep. Okay. So that's just chords. And this is your uke. That's nice. Yeah, this is just my uke. So I just played these three chords over and over for about 50 seconds. So that's just, yeah, that's, it. that's just me. That's just me sitting in my room playing three different chords. That's, a mel that's the melody. That, All right. Yeah, that's the melody. So pause that and go to the next one. This is when I add in Music Memos Band. So this is the bass and the drums. OK, I'm in love already. <laughs> yeah, instantly it sounds like a great song. I'm like, we're in a cafe somewhere. Yeah, it's, that's really as, great. As soon as I put this together, I'm like, OK, this sounds like a jazzy New Orleans kind of funky feel to it. Um, so I brought it into GarageBand. There's a share button, and you just tap the share button, and you send it to GarageBand. And I did this that's with nice. GarageBand Pro, or with GarageBand on the iPad Pro. So I instantly used the new GarageBand update, and it automatically gives you all of your loops in your track view, just like you'd be normally used to using um, you know, if you had designed it from scratch. So you can adjust those loops from there. And I changed a couple things. I made it so that the bass and the drums led in. And then I brought in the uke. And then I added two different vocal layerings. And that's the last track. Let's hear the last. Do you want to do it now? Or sure. We're yeah. saving the best for last. <laughs> So, so some of those instruments are loops. The bass is a loop, uh, but uh, the guitar, the ukulele is you. The voice is ukulele obviously is me. You. The voice is me. Yep. So what's great and is it allows you because you don't have maybe a bass musician hanging around or oh. drums to. So and I am terrible. I am terrible with rhythm. This yeah. is the thing. Is like one of the one of the things that I love about music memos and also about GarageBand, is it fixes your rhythm problems. Right. Uh, where you know I. I can play rock band drums. I'm not a drummer. Right. Uh, but it really helps to have that drum beat in any kind of song that you're working on because it's just, it's helpful for you to visualize what the bigger version of the song looks like. But it also gives you, it gives it more atmosphere. It gives it more of a, a finished sound. And so GarageBand's automatic drummer is huge for that, for, for songwriters who don't have that rhythm and percussion talent to just do that. And while I could, you know, I have a friend who's a cellist who I could probably be like, play something that sounds like a bass beat on my my song. 
But, you know, my friend's a professional jealous. She's got a gig and, and I'm not just right. going to be able to call her up at any moment in time. And this really allows me to play around and test what I really want. What's so great about music memos is because it automatically detects the chords you're using. I mean, this is huge from a, um, again, I'm, I'm a dabbling musician at most. My parents are both musicians, so I have kind of like the aura of expertise but I'm not somebody who has studied music theory extensively, and I'm not somebody who can write you sheet music to say, I want this. So Music Memos really allows me to take the chords that I know on my ukulele and pair them with a bass track and a drums track so that when I go into GarageBand, I automatically know what keys I want to be in and um, what, you know, what tracking I want for my auxiliary instruments. And that's something that without more people or without much a much better music theory background, I wouldn't be able to do. I just wouldn't. I would give up because I would just be like, well, I would love to do this, but I need like five more years experience in music theory to actually be able to put this together. Or I need some friends who are legitimately professional musicians. That's kind of what GarageBand really always has been, which is mm -hmm. uh, you know, in enabling people with no little or no musical talent. Uh, to, to make music, and a lot of people got into music. I know it's my son, he's went from GarageBand uh, to uh, Ableton Live, he uses Logic Pro, and he's doing a lot of great stuff, mm -hmm. and he was inspired because it was so easy to get started, and this makes it even easier. I've imported my live memo, and you see these are just regular GarageBand tracks, the, yep. the bass and drums, uh, it chose one, but you know, you could now change the bass to some other instrument you can as you did a serenity move it around there's your there's your original vocal idea mm -hmm. so this is really fantastic and you can also see how the music memos app is great for the iphone but then the ipad pro this yeah. is really a place where you can really have the the, the full experience yeah, yeah. how is garage band different on the ipad pro the ipad and the iphone or, or is it the same apple on the ipad pro you get access to more features um okay. so just like while iMovie on the iPhone is limited in some ways and, I, and iMovie on the iPad has more things like picture and picture available to it, it's the same sort of idea. I believe Live Loops, the full Live Loops selection might be only available on the iPad Pro. And the iPad Pro also, because of its screen size, has more, uh, more availability with the digital instruments. So on a keyboard, for example, if you look at the, the normal keyboard, not the smart keyboard, um, the... Uh, no, not, that's, that's a sampler. sampler. Oh, that's pretty um, cool, go, too, by yeah, the way. But I that also say. is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the sampler will just, you know, you play one thing and then it'll just loop it over and it's over amazing. and over, which is pretty great. Yeah. But me, if you go back to, um, yeah, if, um, oh. so that shows you the ba the different kind of bass cycles yeah. you go to. Yeah. But on the iPad Pro, the keyboard has two full rows of keys, which is pretty great. And you yeah. have a full you have a full fret right there um, yeah. on the uh, on your guitar and on your bass. So uh, a real musician could play. Actually has yeah, has keys they're not horrible to play with. Like those those are a little bit small but they're not horrible. And no, if you they're tap, playable. Yeah, if you tap the button on the far right that shows like the little keys symbol, that'll actually give you a uh, different yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can have slightly bigger keys that are two rows tall. Um, you can do lots with this. Is there a attack stuff. and sustain the kind of things that real keyboards yeah, yeah. So if you yeah, see sustains, up in the yeah. top left, there's a sustain, and you can mm -hmm. hold it down. It recognizes pressure. Um, yeah. Wow. That's really. Now yeah. is the is the is this all in the new update for GarageBand, or has this been? Yeah. There for a while? So the a lot of these things have been there for GarageBand. Live Loops is available in the new GarageBand update. How and do I get the, to that? Um, so Live Loops, if you go back to, I believe, either creating a new instrument or creating a new song. Yeah. I haven't been able to play with it a lot. Okay. Um, uh, Megan, I think you had that open. I did, Because uh, yeah. I saw the difference between yeah, here we go. Live Loops. Oh, there's Live there we, Loops. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it wasn't... I'm not I, sure how you got that, how you got that up, because I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. <laughs> I don't either, and it's not doing anything. I'm just... So cool. Like, I don't know what to... Yeah. It's long blown away. Uh, by, and this is free, by the way. Yeah. So if you tap on the rock icon right there again, I think that might... Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Oh, so Live goodness. Loops actually does something very similar. Um, there's a looping app... This is app like Ableton or something. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly like Ableton. So you can actually see what these are basically doing, and then you can add new loops and change them around if you wow. want, which is really cool. It'll just play that section of the uh, of the track. Oh. But the nice thing is that Apple's given you a really easy ramp up to this, so you can clearly get to the point 
where it's sophisticated enough that I'm lost now. <laughs> but you can start where you don't have any musical ability or, uh, or knowledge. I shouldn't say ability, but knowledge. And you can start with music memos, making music right away. Exactly. Very and that's powerful. What's so, that's what's so exciting um, yeah. about both the iPhone and the iPad for music and for creation in general. You know, people look at the iPad as very much a consumption heavy device. And I would say that's true in some respects. But, um, but when you look at things specifically creative industries like music, like photos, uh, movie making, uh, these are industries where touch devices actually are very beneficial and are very friendly to people who haven't been steeped in the industry. Right. Or, you know, a, a film editor who's been editing with, you know, Premiere or Final Cut for 30 years is gonna look at the iPad and be like, well, that's a toy. But someone who's never edited film before is gonna pick up iMovie and be like, oh, I totally understand this. And this is what happened in iMovie um, in the early 2000s when it came out and everybody, you know, I was in high school and, right, I, and right. we're like, oh yeah, this is easy to use. Same thing with GarageBand. Yeah. Um, and I, I, but I really think that that's, you know, it's it's where we're headed in the industry. I so figured out how to get to live loops, loops, by the way. So oh, if good. you're in the tracks thing, there's a, a chooser up here. You can there switch over to live loops. And look, yeah. EDM, hip hop, dubstep, R and B, house, chill, rock, electro funk, beat masher. You can create a new one of your own design as well. This is really mm -hmm. sophisticated. And uh, and what Apple does so well, and really in a way what modern computer industry has done so well, is hide complexity and make it uh, give you access to stuff that in the past it was a Brian Eno or a Brian Ferry that could figure it out. Mm -hmm. Nobody else could. Wow, that yep. is really cool. This yeah. is so great. So I mean, when you tweeted about this, I thought, well, here's another thing that I can't do, just like I can't draw like Serenity just because I have an Apple Pencil, which is very sad for me. Yeah. <laughs> but this is something that is maybe a little bit the, the a little bit easier to use to make something rather than, you know, you're not going to pick up an Apple Pencil and, you know, be you or Picasso. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, when you think about the differences in skill in terms of drawing or music making, we all have the instrument for music making, which is our voice. And um, to a certain extent, you need training on, you know, how to control that sound. Or if you're going to play, you know, a ukulele, you need to know, like, this is a chord. Uh, but ultimately, those they're like little, little onboarding steps. Whereas Music Memos takes away the big questions, mm -hmm. which is, how do I go from a chord to making a song? Which is really, like, that's, well, I remember being 9 or 10, and just listening to, to songs over and over again, being like, I have no idea how to build any of this, but I want to write songs, I just don't know how. And so you end up playing the same chord over and over again and singing and hopefully something will make up of it. It's just, it makes the whole experience so much easier. This is incredible. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally this simple. Here's my songs, I'm gonna add a new song. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, create a new song, not at start with voice memos. Mm -hmm. Um, let me do that again. Create a new song, and you choose. In this case, I'm just going to choose dubstep, mm -hmm. and you're, it's already pre-populated <laughs> with a bunch of kind of typical dubstep uh, sounds. And you can you, you start with something, and mm -hmm. I think somebody can very quickly look at this. And by the way, you don't have to be a musician at this point because now you're taking other musicians' loops mm -hmm. and and mixing them to your heart's content. So exactly. You just have to know what sounds good. And intrinsically, right. I think we a lot do. of us know what. Humans yeah, exactly. Do. Yeah. <laughs> Most yeah. people. I won't, I won't say everybody knows how, but <laughs> chances yeah. are you probably know how something is going to sound. Yeah. Like if something sounds pleasing or displeasing to your ear. Well, even more than that, because I'm never going to be able to make great music with any of these tools. But you do learn a little bit about structure very quickly. And you oh, kind yeah. of start to understand what you're hearing a little bit better. And when you look at something like this, and now you listen to a dubstep song, you're going to realize these are the components that make a dubstep song. I think you, I think you appreciate music more, even if you never end up making it. This is such a great tool, free if you have an iPad. It comes with the iPad. If, does it come with the iPhone as well? Uh, I, I think it think does. No, I or do you have to no, buy it? No, it's a free download for both of them. Free download it's for both. It's pretty big. Of them. Yeah. It's a pretty big. It's a very yeah. It's a very big app, and the live loops and the demo sounds that come down are even bigger. When you launch the app, uh, of course, the way that app, Apple's new app thinning works, you download a certain portion oh, of it, which is a couple hundred megs, okay. and then you download the live loops, which are one or two gigabytes. So you're getting like a you're getting a lot of data here, but it's a lot of stuff to play with and a yeah. lot of fun to be had. And another reason to buy a 128 gigabyte iPad, mm -hmm. and maybe another True. reason to buy an iPad Pro because yeah. you get even more with the iPad Pro. Right.
Yeah, I'm definitely doing a deep dive on that soon. Uh, <laughs> so <crossed>. cool. <laughs> so cool. Uh, you should definitely check out Serenity's article at iMore and listen to all of her SoundCloud, uh, the process, and all of her music. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. And thanks for having me. This was fun to talk about. I hope you guys go and make your own music. Yay. <laughs> Work on your hums, Leo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Or your dubstep. Either one. Yeah. <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> Thanks, Serenity. Take care. You find Take Serenity's care. work, and it's great work, too, at imore.com. Mm -hmm. All right, should we thank our first sponsor? Let's thank them. Thank you, first sponsor. <laughs> oh, no, I can actually talk about it. Texture. You can. Texture.com. Texture. I love texture. Texture <laughs> is... What you need the next time you're going on a flight, do you? I do this. I go when I'm on an air, at an airport. I go right to the airport uh, bookstore and buy like a stack of magazines like this. Don't do it anymore. No. All you have to have is a tablet or a phone. It's really nice on an iPad and then a subscription to Texture. Texture is like Netflix for magazines. And what happens is, you know, instead of having to buy a magazine, read one article, and feel guilty about the waste, the clutter it adds, the messed up coffee table. You subscribe to Texture, you have access to dozens of magazines, uh, and, and read one article, you don't feel bad. And you know what, if you feel like reading People or Entertainment Weekly, just go ahead, no one will know. Okay. It's okay. Texture.com slash iOS, we're gonna get you a free trial that's full unrestricted access to the world's best magazines. And by the way, it's not just the current newsstand issue, it's back issues too. It's everything that's in the magazine and then some because they also, in many cases, include bonus features like video. You get the editorial team at Texture and they recommend stories. They do curated collections, which lets you pick a topic and dive deep into it across a variety of magazines. Look at that, National Geographic, Real Simple, Oprah, People, uh, GQ, Men's Health, Time Magazine, Sports Illustrated, Rolling Stone. See, there's something every week uh, or every month I want to read in Rolling Stone, something every month I want to read in Wired. But I don't want to subscribe because I don't want the monthly magazine. And you can't always get everything on the on the web. This is everything that's in the magazine. I really, really like it. It is. And for recipes, I have now access to a dozen cooking magazines, mm -hmm. which is great. Good Valentine's Day gift, too. Because if you happen to have a partner who has piles of magazines everywhere, yeah. it was a subtle gift. Give him a little gift. hint. Drop him a hint. <laughs> Say, here, honey. Maybe get rid of those magazines. The next time you want to read a magazine, you've got it. You've got them all, even offline, because you can download them ahead of time. Uh, I just love it. Texture.com slash iOS. Try it free, and you will see. You will become hooked. Thank you, Texture, for your support of iOS today. I have a couple of cool things and some news. Uh, Procreate, we've talked about a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, that's the one I, get, I, got my, I gave my mom yeah, it's when a drawing. I gave her an iPad Pro and a pencil because she's mm -hmm. an artist. She loves it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's great for artists. And there's a new feature that I didn't know about. Scott Johnson, who's also an artist, came on uh, Tech News Today, and he told me about this. You can, it automa Procreate automatically records your drawing yeah. in the process of drawing it, and then you can play back. So Greg Burnett, uh, also, oh, that's good. Artist. Greg he did that. He did. He did. Dang, um, so, watch this. If you go to, I don't know, is this a new feature? Because I feel like I've seen animations of people's drawings from Andy Anako and others. That's well, not for, new. It for was some new to time. me. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's been part of Procreate all along. But it's great. It records uh, your drawing. Yes. Now, where did that go? The actions. Oh, actions and playback. I what can't pretend it? to have used it. I Export it, video. Oh, I think it was. Do share, you have to or, oh, share? No. Choose format. Let's can you see. can't you just play back his actions? Yes, instant replay. Here it there is. There it is, instant replay. Let's watch as Greg draws this cute cartoon. You know, it's so fun to watch somebody who can do something like this from scratch. Right. I was because we were talking about making art uh, with the iPad Pro, and I feel like this is one way that you could learn if you weren't an artist. Yeah like Greg or Serenity. Well, it, Procreate has features for people uh, like us who have no talent. They for do. instance, they've got a tracing mode. I, mm -hmm. Andy's used that a lot. Uh, I love this replay because you can watch other people work and that's always magical. Yes. Um, but you can also, as you said, you can also uh, use it to share your drawings. I see people do this all the time on Facebook and yeah. Instagram. I love it. That's cool. Well, it was new to me. Yeah. yeah. Replay. You can share it there, export the video or share the artwork. Instant replay. Mm -hmm. I'm here, yeah. I'm Mom, start recording your art. This is also Greg's work, um, but yeah, here's my Don't we my have any, any of yours? <laughs> okay. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I'm getting there. Also, this mm -hmm. one. I wish Pretty you'd get there this. soon. Yes, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> okay. What is the title um, of that? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to know. Here, Leo. Yeah. 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you have to record it uh, before you draw it, so you can't just play back. No. Uh, oh, I wish yeah, you could just. Here's something one of my kids drew. Uh, so no, you I could spy on your kids. Draw, so, yes, you could see what they drew before they deleted they it. it. Right, yeah. exactly. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, yeah. So, so you, you, you can't. Canvas. Yeah, I guess you have to go to Canvas and then Instant, instant replay. replay. There it is. Yeah, see, we can replay yeah. even if you aren't okay, any good. Okay, what he was doing. All right. Is that your son? No, that's Greg Burnett. Oh, I was going to say he had no. talent. But no, my now son I, now I have to take it is back. this one. Which <laughs> no, I but think now I... can you replay that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's see how he did it. This is... That's kind of fun. Have yeah. you shown him this yet? I haven't yet. I mean, he might be watching at home. Who knows? That's it. Yeah, but that's neat. Yeah, and you, I, you could, I presume, slow it down and speed it yeah. up. Yeah. All right. So other news or news to me, these iPhone 5 SE <laughs> rumors. Yeah, I think that the drumbeat now is so strong that I feel pretty confident. You know, you get to a point with the, in the rumor mill where you go, yeah, I don't believe it. Okay, I'm starting to believe it. Yeah, it must be true because everybody's saying it. Um, the 5SE. 5SE. And there's some interesting uh, news today about this. This is Mark Gurman, of course, the king of Mac rumors or Apple rumors in 9 to 5 Mac. Uh, it will be a 4-inch, we believe, iPhone, which Apple will announce in March. It'll be, they always have like the low-cost entry-level iPhone. This will be the new entry-level mm -hmm. iPhone. In fact, Mark says it will replace sales of the iPhone 5 and 5S. So the iPhone line will begin with the 5SE, go to the 6, and then the 6 Plus starting, I guess, in March when they announce this phone. But interestingly, and uh, there's some logical reasons for this, there was some debate over which chip is going to be in here. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be the older iPhone 5? A chip or is it going to be the newer iPhone 6s chip and in fact it looks like it's going to be the a9 and uh, Mark's reasoning on this I think is sound which is if you're going to release a new phone that you're going to want to release it with kind of enough power to do new stuff right you don't want people to say you know oh I can't use iOS 9.3 because I have the old uh, brand new old phone mm -hmm. so I think it's logical they make the i9 in uh, a9 in there plus the m9 motion coprocessor, which means you'll be able to say, hey, Shlomo, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, I can't tell you the hard, but dad. Say the name, and even if you're not plugged in, it'll yeah. come on. I, I expect, and again, the, you know, the usual caveats apply. This is a rumor. Nobody's, Apple doesn't say anything, mm -hmm. but, and we won't find out for a couple months. But I suspect this will have all the features uh, in that regard of an iPhone 6 or 6S. Uh, it probably won't have forced touch mm -hmm. or the 3D touch. The, you know, the press hard ability. Yeah. But, but for tiny hands, get ready. Four inch screen. I think a lot of people say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so used to this. This doesn't feel big. This I would never go plus. back. No. I won't go back. I won't go back. Um, but a, and it's funny when people come in the studio and they have an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 4. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, what is that little thing you've got in yes. your hand there? What is that? Is that a phone? <laughs> that tiny little How toy. quickly we get used to the giant phones. But there are plenty of people who say, I just I can't carry it in my pocket. I don't want to carry such yeah. a big thing. I'm, I, maybe I don't use it in the same way you do. I just feel like if, if you're considering what size to get, you should try it. You should play with the larger size phone because things like that garage band, you can actually do that mm -hmm. on this phone, you know, as you're traveling around. It's nice to have all that additional capability. Right. And now we're reading more. We're watching more movies. What is this and... little phone? What is this? It's so small. It's so cute. It's so broken. Yeah. What? That's so, sad. <laughs> so sad. That's when they made glass backs. Remember that? Yeah. yeah those that were was the a, days. that was a good idea. Thank you, Apple. Uh -huh. But it's yeah. We wanted smaller, 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 and now we want bigger, bigger, bigger. We know. Whose phone is want. this? That was yours. It's mine. It's in my office. It's just on the with the antique all the other antique technology we have around here. Really? I wonder whose it is. I should power it up. It's not a lightning connector. We'll have to go out and find a 30-pin plug. Right. But that's the size, right? That's the four-inch screen. Good Lord. How did we survive? I don't know. Look at that. People yeah. wanted it. Or is this Look three and a half? Look how tiny the screen is This might be three and a half. So it's a little bigger than this, yeah. but it's not much. It's so cute. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah. Tiny hands, get ready. A phone for you. Also, apparently, there's going to be a 64 gig version. That's what Mark Gurman said. Oh, yeah. It's from 16 to 64 as opposed to skipping the 32. Thank you. I wish they'd skip the 16, the 16 and just go to 64. Horrible. That's a punishment. Our recommendation, yeah, if you're going to buy it, unless you really can't afford 64 gigabytes of storage, get the get the 64. They do the 16. I'm convinced they do it just so they can say the price point is yes. 150 dollars. Yes, exactly. Or you haven't heard any rumors about the price of the five. No. Have you? Now that's an interesting question. Apple's never 
targeted a low price market, and I don't mm -hmm. believe this is that. Yeah. I, that's why I think they'll have the A9 processor. I think it's not targeted at a ch cheap phone, it's targeted at the audience that wants a smaller phone. Yeah. But it will be less. Right. How much less, I don't know. Now that we pay the full price for phones, we don't do that subsidized price. I don't know. I'm sure subsidized it'll be a hundred bucks, or maybe maybe the 16 gig will be 50 bucks. Unsubsidized, 500? Hmm. Maybe, I don't know. It will be interesting because I think a lot of people, it's really about everyone knowing they have the newest thing, you know, where it was like the six was shaped differently we, than the five. We, and then we have the pink, so you know it's a, you know, we move it's in a different new. circle than normal people. Well, I don't know. I don't know. We I mean, all are in the club, if you know what but I mean. But the kids. The kids these days, they also do want they are they sensitive? Yeah. Well, kids, mm -hmm. yeah, they mm -hmm. want they want to have. The I asked I asked some kids, what do you think about this? The next iPhone might be small, like the five, and they just were like, "What? Well, Why would you want that? It's old." I want to just say this about that. I meet people all the time with smaller iPhones, mm -hmm. and they apologize. They say, "Oh, I know, I'm going to buy a new one just today." Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I'm going to. I met a young woman who had the uh, iPhone probably five five or five S. Oh yeah, I know, but I'm due for. And up, I'm going to get the new one. Don't apologize. It's yeah. okay. Congratulate yourself. Pat you're, yourself on the you're back. Smart. You're smart. It the does world. the same thing <laughs> as this one. And you save money. Yeah. My husband has a 5C. I've said that. Before. Does he apologize? No. He ought to. No. He doesn't. He doesn't apologize. He loves it. It's, it's red. Pink? Oh. It's red. Okay. Uh, Red's right. cool, actually. Yeah. So let's move I on. I almost got. Okay, we won't move on. Let's not move on. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Let's not move on. <laughs> we can move on. I almost go got a red car, but I decided not to. You know, I'm, cho I'm trying to buy a new car for the fall because mm -hmm. my, my lease runs out. Oh, yes. We and I want to buy an electric car because I mm -hmm. want to be conscientious about the environment and all that. And then I got, I got, I don't know what happened to me. Maybe I was, I decided to buy a white car with white upholstery. Oh, you went, you, you, you pulled the trigger off. Well. Fortunately, I have a wife who talked me out of it. <laughs> oh, but you were going to get Stormtrooper style seats? I was going to get the Stormtrooper seats. And then I thought, this is really cool. You know why? Because I thought, this electric car, it's a Tesla. I'm going to be living in the future, so I might as well look like this is like the mm -hmm. Disney monorail. Right. Like, I'm in the future. And when you get in a white-on-white -white car, you'll feel like you're in the future, mm -hmm. right? Wow, this car is interesting looking. It's very clean. But, you know, <sighs> she talked, me. She talked oh, me down, oh, so good. I got a normal color. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be cool. Mm -hmm. By the way, we'll probably do pieces on it because that way I can deduct it. Uh, no, we'll probably do pieces on it because uh, it's very yeah. iPhone specific. I mean, it even has right. a lightning charger in it. It has four USB ports. It's got all this stuff. And you control it. You can drive it with your iPhone. You yeah, can summon, summon it. it. Yeah. So I think, I, think will... I need one too, probably. It's, you for need iOS one because today. it's an iOS device. I think you probably need to get so me one. So now when we talk about iOS today, sure, we're going to talk about the iPhone and the iPad, the Apple Watch, the, the Apple TV, Teslas. and the Tesla Model X. It's all iOS. All right, we'll get on that right after the show. Um, I wanted to say you gave me this pad and quill How iPhone case. How do you like case. that? Um, I, I found noticed that, you're not using it. No, I tried to use it. So it's. The iPhone fits in there. You put your driver's license and all your credit cards in here, and, and then it looks and notice, like a little book. Because I wanted you, everybody, to remember that yeah. I gave it to you. I put it's my name Leo. on it. Yeah. Don't you do that with your gifts? Um, absolutely yeah. not. Uh, <laughs> I was traveling this weekend with a friend, and you know, and I explained that you had given it to me. She was like, "I was wondering that because you're not even a Leo." <laughs> but um, no, I but Leo it... has a habit when he gives gifts of putting his name on it, so you know <laughs> Before, where he got yeah. it. It's uh, reasonable, I think. Uh, so it's you put so your driver's license in there and, and all your credit cards. Easy, and you can put money in there. This but is actual. It's hard wood. to type. Is that what you found? Like, it's hard to type on there. Really? Um, like, it's just this too. That's big. not why I gave it up. It's just too big, is why. Yeah, I gave it up. well, it's too, too big to hold. That was what I found, and I. But it's so pretty. Yeah, it really is. I feel like this makes the iPhone feel like it should belong in a fine library. It was beautiful, you know? and it's easy to just reach in, especially if you're traveling. But yeah, I found when I really it, wanted to type, it was. Well, give it back to me, then I'll okay, take it. Okay, I will. Because it's got my I name on it. I also found it. it, it show out. me how you get the phone out, because I found that to be a you little just, bit difficult. Uh, push it out right here. You, there's a hole, see? Right. I, Anytime there's a hole in the case, I, I personally I still found it. I knew use that, that there was a the hole there, but see, it's not. <laughs> exactly. Who takes it out? Once you put it in, you should leave it in. Right. So, You're I mean, right. I think the pad out. and quill stuff is so beautiful. Um, I really like their stuff. And they even the make, iPad case, but... If you can't afford the Hermes wristband, they make a nice leather mm -hmm. Apple watch band, uh, Hermes style, but half the price. Um, yeah, maybe I'll use this again. Yeah, maybe. I've been looking for a new wallet, you know? Uh, okay. Now Here's that I have more. a purse, I can have more room for stuff like this. Uh, 
That's pretty. It is pretty. God, it's glad, very pretty. I just found like it, it like, I don't know, I need my hands gripping the phone like this and typing um, oh. like this. And when it's out like this, my thumbs don't reach. You can't type. Reach. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, I can type. That's not a problem. It's did, harder. Did you try bending this over around? Yep, I did. Huh. So right. maybe it's me with my small hands. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I need a smaller phone. This is hard, too. You can't quite reach these little switches mm -hmm. and stuff in there. It's a little harder to do that. But, I, you know, I think on the, on the balance, it's more convenient. Right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, someone, have someone else try it. Okay, me. there's something else I wanted to talk to you about. Um, so over the weekend on Friday, Google, you know, the... You can't re-gift something that was re-gifted to you, can you? That wouldn't be called re-gifting or re-re-gifting. Like if I gave it back to you? Yeah. Here, I got you this gift. Yeah. You well, just, it would depend on how you your re -re memory was. What? Oh, this is beautiful. And you even <laughs> put my name that. on it. Yeah. <gasps> That's so nice. I also got you a Tesla. I don't know if you remembered you paid for it or not. Thank but. you. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, there's all this stuff going on with the Google Oracle case where the Oracle lawyer keeps revealing this. all these things. And she revealed that Apple paid, no, that Google paid Apple a billion dollars uh, to make, keep, to keep Google one, as the one billion dollars. Billion dollars to for keep, the search bar. Yeah, to be on the search bar. So there's a lot of interesting stuff. I you mean, know, I if I were Google, I would just say, go ahead, take it off, see what your users say. Because mm -hmm. do you want something else as your search no, bar? No, you don't. You That's what, that was my, I know. And I mean, it's also interesting because Google is really counting on people not knowing or just not bothering to change it, you know, from the right. default. Because it wasn't like you couldn't get Google on your, you know, it's just the default. Well, can you? I mean, is there a setting? Is there some way to change? It's this thing when you, or in Safari, and you type, you know, uh, what would Megan Or I guess not changing the default, do? but then just using Chrome. You can, I changed You could it. just use, as I did, I yeah. could just go to Google.com, start right. using that, but that's too much trouble. You're going to use this. And Siri, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to say her name, but sorry, I woke you up. I didn't mean to. Um, you, d you didn't wake it up. Shlomo. The, the first word. The first word. Mm -hmm. Shlomo. Uh, uses, does she use Google? No, she uses Bing. Yeah. So I guess they didn't, maybe if they'd paid $2 billion. Maybe. But there's a lot of, and then there was that 34% number, which I thought was interesting. They, you know, they released that, but they don't know if, if 34% went to Google or 34% went to Apple of like how much. Of the billion. Yeah. No, of the, of their search revenue. Oh. Yeah, because it's like, uh, so, okay, so let me, let me, let's get this straight. So not only are they, Apple, they getting the billion dollars, they're getting a percentage of the ads. Google paid Apple a billion dollars. Yes. Apple said, we'll continue to use it. Oh, and by the way, we also want to cut. Yeah, which is either 34% or... Nice, nice work if you can get Or it. Google got 34%, right. but that, then, it was, then all the documents were closed up, so we don't know. We also learned something else in Discovery, the Discovery phase. This is the Oracle lawsuit against Google. They say it's Java, it's ours, mm -hmm. you're using it, you didn't license it. Uh, the other thing we discovered in a Discovery is, is that Google has made $33 billion on Android over the life of mm -hmm. it. Um, and uh, what's something like, how much was profit? Like 22 I don't know that the, we knew what was profit. I think they said what the profit was, okay. a considerable amount of profit. Um, and then, of course, 9 to 5 Mac had to write the snarky headline. Well, that 33 billion that they made on Android, Apple makes more than that on the iPhone in one quarter. Right, but they sell phones. Right. So they it's, sell it's physical apples products. And oranges. You know, yeah. so. Uh, yeah, that, but so back to the first thing about Apple making so much money off of Google search. It's an interesting thing to think about because a lot of times on this show we talk about like we like Apple, we like iOS. They're not profiting from all of our personal information as Google is, but they are. Yeah. Well, we and truth is, if you you know if you knew if you kind of followed the stories, you knew this because for a long time Mozilla Firefox, the browser. The whole Mozilla Foundation was was basically funded by the fees they got from Google for using Google as their search. It was a ve it's very mm -hmm. lucrative if you have Google in your search bar because Google has always it's, you don't have to negotiate it with them and they've always shared a percentage of the revenue from ads mm -hmm. back to whoever did the referent the referral. Mm -hmm. And when Mozilla Firefox does the referral, they get money. There was millions and millions of dollars a year. I think it was more than a hundred million dollars a year. And of course, Apple's even more. And that I don't think they even had to negotiate that. That's just that's what that's what Google does. Mm -hmm. So yeah, everybody makes money off of Google. Um, 
Apple, it's interesting, Apple also killed iAds. Uh, did we talk about that last week? We, I don't think we did talk about no. it because it was such a confusing, you didn't want to talk about it. No, you that's ended the up Apple talking. radio we didn't want to talk about, and I'm still confused by that. So iAds and radio are kind of related. Yeah, that's what Alex Lindsay said on MacBreak, yeah. that there's a relationship. Oh, listen. One, of course I so listen nice to MacBreak weekly. Thank you. Doesn't everybody? I should listen to it more often. <laughs> uh, you so, should. Yeah. So, um, usually I'm playing, uh, you know, Candy Crush while they're, they're talking, so I don't know what he said. But, the, no, the idea is that uh, he believes, and I'm not sure this is true, iTunes Radio, and we're still confused by what that is, by the way. Mm -hmm. We never really did quite figure it out. We think it's the Pandora-style radio stations that you could do on iTunes, which have been free up to now, are going to go into the paid tier. You'll have to be an Apple Music subscriber to keep using it. Alex pointed out that the way they made money before was with ads in that stream, and he thought that was iAds. Apple has had iAds. They've had that platform for some time. They announced it at one of their big events. It was an ad platform for app developers. You could put Apple's iAds in your application. Mm -hmm. uh, people who wanted to advertise could do all sorts of interesting things with their ads, including a full page ad. But apparently, Apple put too many restrictions on advertisers. They weren't making much money. And I think even more importantly, I think Apple's realized that if they want to position themselves as the privacy leader, the, the company that protects your privacy, they can't also, at the same time, be selling your information to advertisers. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. So I think probably that's at least part of it, if not the full reason why they discontinued iAds. But good for them. That gives us a choice. It means if you like Google and you want to, and you don't mind, uh, you know, exchanging information, you can you can use. Google services, but if you decide you don't want to do that, there's somewhere you can go and you where you have a, a secure, and we know uh, iPhone is very secure, iPad's very secure, and private place uh, to compute, to get on the internet. And I think that's great. It's nice to have that option. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I don't know. Who, who knows? Uh, I have another story here. Alex Lindsay knows. He does. I'll have to ask him. Okay. Uh, Doug Bauman, hired by Apple, the VR expert. Did you talk about that on Twit this weekend? No. That was interesting. Who is he? Um, he was... When he's at home. <laughs> he was a professor. Mm -hmm. um, this story was in the Financial Times. Um, and he actually did some work with augmented reality on the HoloLens. He got a $100,000 research grant from Microsoft for using the HoloLens to study a collaborative analysis of large-scale mixed reality data. Did you see the sandbox, uh, augmented reality sandbox we had on the new screensavers on Saturday? If you haven't seen that yet, it is amazing. Not yet. It's in my queue. It uses Microsoft's Connect technology. Oh. It's an open source project, and it's being used to teach kids and other people how to topo, topo maps work, how terrain works. I mean, it's really cool. VR and AR, which are related, are exploding. You just mm -hmm. saw uh, on Sunday, Twitter announced that the man and one of the men who found Vine was running the Vine division for Twitter has left Twitter to go work on VR at Google. Mm -hmm. All of the companies are hiring the best minds they can as fast as they can. Uh, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, they're all getting into VR. Uh, I think that all, all four companies have decided this is the next big thing. And if you had to guess, would you think Apple is going to do more of a smartphone phone VR, like Google Cardboard or... You know, um, unlike these other companies, they've demonstrated nothing. We yeah. know what Facebook's up to. They've right. got Oculus. We know what Google's up to. They've got uh, Google Glass. They've got Google Cardboard. We know what, fa we know what uh, Microsoft's up to. They've got HoloLens. What is Apple doing? Yeah, Have they no, announced no. anything? No. Have they shown anything? No. no. But we continue to try to read the tea leaves. Oh, somebody got hired. Is that That's your VR. special hire buzzer? buzzer? <laughs> yeah. Oh, bing, bing. <laughs> I heard the buzzer go off. So you set up a little if this and that script that if somebody... Yes. I yeah. actually... I'm mocking you. Mm -hmm. That's obviously... You don't, no, do you? No, no, oh, okay. but I will. I do have an Apple PR bot on Telegram. You know, Telegram allows bots, yeah. and I love this messaging service. We do all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. I have a Leo bot, the chief twit bot, which announces when a show is about to start and when it's available for download. Uh, somebody's made an Apple PR bot. Whenever Apple does a press release, I get a notification on oh, my Apple Watch, I and I can that. read it right away. Is, you should subscribe. I'll tell you about okay, it. Okay, tell yeah. me about it. Yeah. We won't tell you about it. He'll just well, tell me I'll about find it. it for you, and I can show you if you if you care. Um, let's see, Telegram, and the name of it is. Oh, I haven't set up Telegram on this. I'll have to do it on my iPhone. Messaging on the iPad, I find, is not particularly. Uh, yeah. Useful. Well, I know how to get it. I know how to get your attention now. Yeah, that's how. Here, now, so okay. what? You're we're using Facebook Messenger for our conversations. These conversations. Days. <laughs> There are a lot of animated GIFs in those conversations. Or pictures of me with my face on a baby. We'll find uh, out how, yeah. all about that in a minute. Okay, the so I have Telegram. Do, Apple do PR bot is, I guess, uh, at Apple PR bot, I guess. Let me, let me, uh, mm -hmm. 
Apple PR Bot. It's not, fr it's not official, right? Um, at Apple PR Bot. That's how you add something okay. on Telegram. Um, and then as soon as you send it, your first message, it'll say, hello. And um, there you go. That's it. And you just tap it, and you're going to start. And now whenever Apple puts out a press yeah. release, you will get a press release. So you don't have to watch this show or Mac Break Weekly anymore. Just get the bot. Well, you know what? The work. big the, Actually, you do want to watch this because Apple's first quarter uh, 2016 results conference call is coming up at uh, 2 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. <laughs> so when Apple releases its, uh, its results, I will get a notification <laughs> on, on the Telegram, and I will be able to see those results. And it'll probably be while we're doing Mac Break Weekly, I'll get the huh. first uh, results, so I'll be able to talk about that. Well, That's I will tomorrow. be in Healdsburg. Why? It's my mom's birthday. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Oh, Happy that's birthday, great. Sharon. Are, yes. are you doing, uh, are, are Sharon and Brian moving to Hillsburg? For... No, we're just going, just the four of us. Just my parents and me, my sister and I are going to go stay in a hotel and oh, drink some wine. What and fun. And Patrick Norton's going to do my show and Jason. Oh, that's Jason great. And... Tech News uh, Today will mm -hmm. be uh, hosted by Patrick mm -hmm. starting tomorrow? Well, just tomorrow. Fantastic. And then. Uh, I didn't even know this. That's Florence great. Florence Ion uh, love is going Florence. to. Take my place. Um, and I love Patrick. Of yes, so, so that's good. So yeah, I will have be fun. celebrating. I won't see you next. I won't see you till Thursday. Yeah, you won't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I won't see you Thursday. No, you anyway. won't see me then. Okay, so I think we're done with the news, which means that I would like to talk. It's time for you to take your pills, Leo. Oh, thank goodness I've got my pill pack right here. Pill pack is the way. I'm being silly, but you know I take medications. I take over the counters. I take uh, vitamins. And pill pack helps me with all three. Do you ever wonder, you know, I do all the time. Have I did I take my pills this morning? Pill pack makes this very easy. They're an online pharmacy and they're full service pharmacy by the way. They do everything that your pharmacy does. In fact, they do it better. For instance, pill pack has a pharmacist on call 24/7. You could talk to them from your home privately. You don't have to have that embarrassing conversation in mm -hmm. front of all the other people in the drugstore. And then they send you your medication. In this great pill pack, it's packed by robots with pharmacist I oversight. Love robots. So, well, robots don't make mistakes. And just in case, they also they have your name. They ha I stole these from Elliot, so don't he? He doesn't need them. Uh, they have uh, the, the the dates that you're taking them. They have an image. This is so smart of each pill, so you know exactly what you're taking, what it is, the dosing instructions from your doctor. And then when it's time, you know, to take your next pill pack, see, this is, I won't take, I wouldn't do this now. It's 8 a.m. Tuesday, June 23rd. But let's say, let's go back in time to June 23rd. You just tear it off, right? You take your medications, and you know when the next one is. You never have to guess, did I take them? Because you know, right there, it's all on the pill pack. It is the best way. You know what else is great about pill pack? Refills are automatic. So once they set, once you set up your prescriptions with pill pack, uh, they will automatically make sure that you get your refills before you need them. It is, this is so cool. Mm -hmm. This And there, by the way, all of this convenience, no extra charge. No extra charge. Just your standard co-pays. Shipping's always free. Works with most major insurance plans, including most forms of Medicare Part D. And when you sign up, of course, they make sure your insurance works before they transfer your medications over. It's very easy. You can do it right on the secure site. In fact, go to PillPack, P I L L. P-A-C-K dot com slash twit. They'll do it all for you. You know, Jill Duffy wrote a review this in PC Magazine. She thought it was great. I think it's great. Time Magazine named it one of their top 25 inventions. There's also a pill pack medication reminder app for your iPhone and your Apple Watch. So that's really nice. Your Apple Watch could say, okay, <laughs> just like you do to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, Leo, time for yep. your meds. <laughs> time. I, now the watch can do that. Pill Pack, it's medication simplified. I love this. You will too. And as a little bit of a incentive, we're going to give you twenty dollars worth of vitamins or OTCs when you sign up and transfer your prescriptions over to Pill Pack. Pillpack.com/slash/twit. So before we move on to your questions, thank you, Scooter X, for pointing out that I had that wrong. Wednesday is Patrick and Shannon, and tomorrow is Florence Ion. Oh, Patrick and Shannon. Mm -hmm. They'll be doing a little tech thing. Yes. A little so. tech thing on tech news today. So that's Wednesday. Because Jason's also taking some time off. Uh, Friday, uh, Jason is taking some time off. And then Christina Warren and Mark Millian are going to host with me. This is why I hate January. It's vacation time. Everybody takes time off. And... Right. And What yeah. are you going to do this summer? Nothing. Be here. Do be this here. show. Yep. All right. So here is a, the first question that we got um, from a user in Australia, uh, John. Hello, John. John, Good day, Australia. Mate. He says, 
uh, not a user, a viewer or a listener. He says, iOS Today is a great show. I love watching it. Thank Just you. a question. If I use Apple Pay, what do, why do stores still want me to sign my name and use I my know. pin? I'm very confused by this. I thought the whole point of Apple Pay was to use your fingerprint so you don't yes. need to sign or use a pin. So did I think. So it really depends it's your on... Bank. Blame your bank. Blame the bank, not the not the clerk. Not the, not the merchant. Not the merchant and not, not the person the running the cash register. It's, the it's bank. your bank. So different banks have different rules for their credit cards. Uh, he's in Australia, mm -hmm. and he still has to, because I was wondering if maybe it was U.S. banks, because we're a little behind here. We just got pins, I mean chips in our credit cards, and it's still chip and sign here. Mm -hmm. So I know the first time I used Apple Pay, I thought, oh, this is great. I'm just going to go like that with my Apple Watch and sail off into the sunset. Depends on your card. With my ATM card, for instance, with my bank, USAA, I have to, just as if I swipe the card, it's exactly the same process, except I just use the watch or the mm -hmm. phone instead of swiping, but I still have to enter my PIN. It still says, do you want cash back? It still says, this is the amount. Is that okay with you? I am pushing all the same buttons. Uh, credit cards, very often, you will still have to enter a PIN if you've got one, or sign your name. And in the US, it is tends to be chip and sign. That hasn't changed, yeah. and yet, uh, and it's, again, the bank rules, I believe. And sometimes you will you may say, well, you don't need anything more, and they'll say no. But that's because if it's under $25 versus Starbucks, if you use it, you do just uh, But it was the same with the credit card. You mm -hmm. didn't have to sign anymore. Right. So it's the bank rules, and uh, it's not regulations. It's not Apple. It's uh, not the merchant. Uh, it's just each card has its own rules okay, about I don't what you have to do to verify. And I hope they do. One more thing. I hope they do trust it eventually because the fingerprint is so much better than that mm -hmm. signature. Anybody can go like that. Yeah. It's the, the fingerprint is better. The signature You, you is. already have a good authentication. Mm -hmm. Well, the signature, There's. I, I did interview someone. The signature, it's like psychological. Like they've done tests where if you have to sign something, you're less likely to be lying. But that Unless you're mean... a thief, in which case you go, yeah, no problem. Right. Uh, so no John is, problem. I don't think John is from Australia. That's, that was wrong. In Australia, you can use your American Express with Apple Pay for transactions of any amount without entering a PIN, right. according to the support page on Apple. That's their policy so, in Australia. Yeah. It's just not the policy here. And that's because I think we're really way behind in the U.S. We just got these PIN, yeah. these chips. But I do love Apple Pay. I feel like in the next few years, banks will become comfortable with it and merchants will become comfortable with it and we'll finally kind of be in a situation where it's enough just to verify your uh, identity because that's really the best way to do right. it. I want airports to be more comfortable with the Apple Watch because when I flew over the weekend, they had a sensor, your, your arm wouldn't fit into yeah. it. She was just like, you was gotta take out your phone. Was yes. it Virgin America? Yeah. yeah. For some, their readers have very little clearance. You can't, so yeah, you either do your phone or you, I, yeah. you know, I'm so, I, I don't want to be that guy who everybody's waiting behind you while you're trying to, mm -hmm. well, no, I have it. It's right now. Wait a minute. Hold on. I have it. Because you wouldn't be just going to guy like, look at that Leo Lepore. I No, it's going to come up. Any, I, so I always print out. Yeah, I printed In addition, it out on the way home yeah. Um, because, yeah, I was with people that printed theirs out, and I felt so great with the paper in my hand. You don't feel that nervousness of, like, right. is my watch going to fit in there? Is my it's battery going to? anxiety gonna... making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, well, is this going to work? Mm -hmm. And then the TSA, same thing that you can do it. I, I did, you can do it with TSA because there's room yeah. for the watch. Mm -hmm. there. It's pretty. It's it's what it is. It has a high cool factor, but it also has a high anxiety factor. I still print my morning passes. Yeah. But Apple Pay on the watch for me has always worked better than it has on the phone. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Just fast. What you mean the tapping doesn't work? Uh, yeah. Or sometimes I don't know what it is. Yeah, it just doesn't oh. come up or something or you know. The watch is great. It is. You know, I'm gonna have to revise my. I mentioned this last week a little bit because of just press record because yeah. of your app cap. I, I've been wearing the Apple Watch now every day because mm -hmm. uh, of the fitness recording because I do a lot, you know, I'm trying to get in shape again mm -hmm. and exercising a lot. Uh, and because of this just press record, which is awesome, let me stop, I have a stopwatch running for some reason. Let me reset that. Timing the show. Yeah, but see that little uh, complication? I just press that. We showed this last week, it's so awesome. And now I'm recording my voice. I wish Apple would do this with music memos. I could make music all mm -hmm. the time. I just so they probably will. That the, the the and I kind of always said this. The Apple Watch, when it comes up, when there's that killer app that makes me say, "Oh, I really want that," mm -hmm. uh, I will have to re reassess. Well, I've reassessed, and I do wear it every day now. I have to say, and uh, Apple Pay wasn't the killer app for me, mm -hmm. but it's Just certainly a recording. part of it. Yeah. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because Tom from Atlanta. Uh, downloaded Just Press Record mm -hmm. uh, to be able to record audio on his watch. However, he says, I have been unable to get the app to install on my watch. 
When I go to my watch on the watch app on my phone, I make sure the slider for show app on the Apple Watch is moved to the right and green. It will show installing underneath, but after a few minutes, it stops installing and the switch moves to the left hmm. next to show app on Apple Watch. What do I have to do to get this to work? So I talked to Tom. I went back and forth with Tom, and you know, I said, "Are you sure that you know? Did you restart your phone? That's what did you, you do. Turn, you restart the watch. Restart and the, the phone. watch. Yeah. So restarting the watch worked yeah. for Tom. Yeah. Uh, That's because, the Apple mantra. Yeah. I Just mean, restart it. <laughs> well, he, it's funny. He also didn't know how to restart it because you know it's not obvious. It's There's no way. It's, it's the, the side button. Yeah. The side button. You just hold. Oh, you could do it. But well, that's probably a reset. There is a also. I think. It's a restart. I believe there's uh, a restart well, you command can in the settings. Just hold the here. Just hold the side button. Yeah, but that's a reset. No, you press hold the side. No, no, the side button, not the digital crown. The side Hi button. Siri. Hey, you know what? Restart. This is the problem. Can I help you with? See, that's why I responded to Tom because I feel bad that there are. You know, this thing's, things... thing's dopey. I'm not going to wear it anymore. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Giving up. Yeah. Here, while you, yeah, I'll just thank play you, some Siri. music. Thanks while for you're... nothing. So I press and hold. Whoops, that's my American Oops. Express card. Sorry. Oh wait a minute, there it is. Yeah, press and hold. No, you're right. Yeah. That's a good press tip. And hold. Then you get power off, power reserve, lock device. So that lock device is good to use, like when you're exercising. You don't want your I, when I do yoga, sometimes my activity app just turns oh. off, so I lock it, okay. so it doesn't turn off when it like presses. Something. Oh, that's really great. Yeah. I thought if you go into the settings, which I can, uh, you know, you have to. It's kind of a pain because you have to Sorry do this really silly, crazy little icon thing, and you go into the settings. I'm pretty sure that there is a reboot option in here as well. But who would know? See, so yeah, there's. I think people really don't even know about this, right? All of the yeah. little things in here. Let's see, general, general uh, reset. reset. Now that's not what you want to no, do. No, you just reset. So I got to flip around. Uh, sometimes reset. resetting is a good thing, but that's going to be that long process where you have to pair it with your phone again. There's going to be a don't cloud. do that unless everything else doesn't work because that's a pain. I have had to do it. I've had to do it too. And it does make the watch, you know, it can fix a, a myriad of problems. I haven't had to do it since the updates, since the watch OS either. updates. Yeah. yeah. And you know that the new uh, iOS 9.3, we're going to be able to have more than one watch with our phone. Mm -hmm. Wonder why. Mm -hmm. So we buy more. Yep. All right. So here was a DM that I got on Twitter from Ben. Remember last week we talked about stolen and we talked about privacy and real names. And, uh, and Ben writes, my ex-wife constantly made fake Facebook accounts and harassed me on Facebook oh because I used my real name. Every time I blocked her new account, she made another one. Eventually, I closed my Facebook account and opened one with a fake name. My ex figured it out, <laughs> reported me for using a fake name, and Facebook closed down my account and demanded oh, I upload my, my driver's license goodness. and the U.S. mail and U.S. mail to prove it. So I left Facebook. I'm the only person in my circle of friends without a Facebook account. It's oh, sad. sad. But the beauty of Twitter is I can hide here just by using right. my first name and my ex can never find me. That's a very good, you know, and we mentioned there's, and we were talking about this last week, there's always good reasons to have anonymity. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, that's terrible. I'm so sorry. But it's interesting because that is the issue with the, because I, I do know people that use face na fake names on Facebook. Um, you usually don't, Facebook usually doesn't figure it out until someone is reporting you. you get, yeah, but if you have a, a, a harasser, Right, that's why you would use it. The yeah. harasser, but that's the irony of right. it. If the harasser finds that fake account, then they're going to report you. And the uh, the true irony is the harasser's been using a fake account all along. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe he should report those fake accounts that mm -hmm. she uses Yeah. and get her kicked off and keep doing that. That might be another option as well. And Facebook, I don't know if you read this news, they uh, used that in a case recently. Someone tagged someone on Facebook and they had a restraining order against the person had a restraining order against this person, and the person with whom the restraining order was against right. uh, went somebody. to jail just for tagging someone just on Facebook. Just for tagging them. It was a violation of the... Um, Do you think it says that now in restraining orders? You have to stay tagging, 60 feet away and you may not tag on Facebook. I don't know, but it is interesting that now tagging on Facebook is the same thing as like coming to your house, which is interesting. We are not yet well equipped to handle all this new stuff, and we're still learning the ins and outs, the ups and downs. Yeah, it is It is fascinating though, yeah. right? Yeah, but, yeah right. and it's it's a side effect of being in public. And the thing is, you are in public with Twitter and Facebook. You are somewhat in public. And mm -hmm. uh, those of us who have lived in public for some time, we kind of developed thick skins and we kind of used to it. Uh, but if, it, if it's your first time in public, <laughs> it can be a little bit uh, aggravating. 
And, you know, having been someone that was uh, on television a decade and a half ago... Uh, Who would that be? <laughs> well, me. You know, I took some time off. I had some kids. I was still right. working, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't in the public sphere. To come back being 10 years older... Congratulations. Has, <laughs> it's been interesting because, yeah. first of all, I'm no longer 26, so, you know, that's different. But also, the Internet has gotten a little bit meaner. No, it's definitely gotten meaner. Like it used it's, to when we were at Tech TV, it was like, you know, you, you didn't have Twitter, so you didn't have people that could find you where you were and, te you know... It's gotten much more hostile, and uh, people use... This is the other flip side of that identity coin, people have used the ability to hide their identity to become absolutely abusive. Mm -hmm. And Twitter is a, you know, it's a problem Twitter's going to have to deal with. I don't know how they deal with it, but Twitter has become a cesspool in some ways because people don't have to be accountable for mm -hmm. what they, they say on Twitter. They right. can say anything they want. They can. And you can just say, well, you don't have to be on Twitter, which is true. You don't have to be. But, I mean, that's also not what you want to say to someone who is in the like, why, do, why does someone not getting harassed get to be on a place where you don't get to be? You yeah. Know, so. it's, a diffi it's very, very difficult. Yes. I, you have my sympathy, Ben. I mean, that's a, that's a terrible thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you're not on Facebook, you could still be on Squarespace. You could still have oh. a Squarespace website. You know, uh, if you're a business, it, see, it's a little different, for, for instance, for a business. You have to have a website. If you're a business and you have customers, you want to be in public so you can find more customers, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there are lots of people, frankly, who want to uh, have a great blog. There's such a joy in being able to write and not have an editor and not have somebody tell you what to write and, 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 and then develop a community around you. And f this is what Squarespace is so great for. Mm -hmm. You can be on Twitter, you can be on Facebook, but you don't own Twitter and Facebook. You own your site. Squarespace is the best hosting. So they host your site, they mm -hmm. store it, they serve it. You, ne you always own it, though. I want to really point that out. Uh, it's yours. You can export it anytime you want. They have the best templates. So you're, you're really making a state-of-the-art site. And I love this. It reflects your personal aesthetic. It looks like you want it to look. It's not a cookie-cutter site. Every site on Squarespace is unique, is a special snowflake just like you. Even <laughs> your shopping cart. So if you're doing e-commerce and all the templates support it, uh, even if you're doing a shopping cart, a lot of times you use other software for shopping carts and it looks like you're going somewhere else and it's kind of ugly and kind of utilitarian. Not with Squarespace. Your commerce looks as beautiful as everything else on your site. If you're a photographer, your portfolio lives there. If you're uh, a band, you can have your calendar, you can sell your music, you can have fans. I, I moved my site over to, over to Squarespace at leoville.com some time ago. I'm using this cover page feature, which I love. You can see, though, the links below to my blog, to my photos. To, I have an event calendar there, my about page, my PGP key, and then all my social links. That is easy. I did that in 10 minutes. I uploaded these images. You even could put animated GIFs in there, and they animate. It's so easy. And I'm, I decided to go with a very clean and simple uh, design, but you can get as fancy as you want, and there are hundreds of buttons you can check, tweak. There's even a developer platform if you're a programmer. There's the lovely and talented Josh Windish, <laughs> and uh, I just I think it's wonderful. By the way, if you go to that second article, people have been asking me for all the audiobooks I've ever listened to. Oh, They're wow. all there. Having your own blog is a way to. I couldn't do that anywhere else, right? That's that's why you have your own blog. There's my Instagram pictures. That uh, those are automatic. There's my tweets. They're automatic. My calendar. Look, you're going to love it. Squarespace.com. You can try it free today. You can get a free custom domain name when you register for a year. And by the way, it's in your name. You own it. I think this is so much better than going to somebody else and have them do it. You can do it yourself. And boy, what a great gift. If you know people are getting married or have a special event, maybe a baby on the way, make them a Squarespace site. Get the domain registered. Give it to them as a gift. Believe me, they'll flip their lids. Squarespace.com. Just do one thing for me. Make sure you use the code IOS today, and you'll get 10% off on your new account. And that could include the account that you're gifting as well. Squarespace.com. Use the offer code IOS today. Squarespace, you should. You really, sh you really oughta. I, I kick myself for not doing it sooner, to be honest with you. I thought I had this fantasy. Oh, wow. <laughs> I look like Al Capone, and you look like my mall. Your mall? My gun mall. Oh, your gun mom. Not my mom. <laughs> your mom. <laughs> we are wearing funny hats. For those of you listening in audio, just imagine us in funny hats uh, for one and only one reason. Only one Cause reason. Because they make us look so damn good. Yeah. And to make you watch the audio so you can see. I mean, watch, watch, watch the, the audio. It looks <laughs> Yes, great. to make you watch the audio because, yeah.
Um, don't I look like Warren Beatty in this hat? You do, absolutely. I thought so. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is where we give our App Cap Award to mm -hmm. the best app of the week, one yes. we can't stop using. What do you, you got one? I got Face hysterical. Swap Live. I what is it? Face Swap Live. Face Swap Live. You can do so many things with this app, and unfortunately, on the iPad Pro, it is only portrait mode. Portrait. Well, oh, well, there we go. Let's get your hat out. So, of uh, I'm so wait a minute. Okay, so you've got turn on the camera. And it's uh, putting blue lines on your eyebrows and your chin line. Now what's going to happen? Well, there? I could be Hillary Clinton. The hat is not. The, there we go. Hillary doesn't wear a hat, to my knowledge. So it yeah. takes your face. Here, take let's take the, the hat, hat off. off. It takes your face, and it mixes it in with somebody else's face. Yes. So the hair is an issue, too. There I am as Hillary. Okay, but we can't see it because your head's in the oh, way. We should have planned this a little bit better. <laughs> uh, there's no way to Maybe really do this. Maybe I can do, do it with the... Yeah, do it on your phone. Oh my gosh, that is creepy. And you can take a snapshot of it, mm -hmm. as you've done. Yes, um, then you have to move it to portrait. You can it's do a better job huh? than that. It looks like you're wearing a skull cap Here's, or something. Let me, let's just look at... Um, Show some of the ones that you've done, because there's some here really... Here I am as a baby. Ah! Video, so we can show that oh my golly gosh uh here i am with hillary clinton's face on my face oh see that looks like more like night of the living dead <laughs> wow uh, what else do we got oh a little a cute little dog so oh i thought you were an ewok or an ewok wow. or a gremlin wow you'd look good as an ewok thank you yeah um Hello. beyonce i think I oh pull off you're beyonce. gorgeous yeah, as beyonce exactly. <gasps> right no oh, one's my gonna harass goodness. me on twitter when i look like that oh <laughs> Wow, you know, you should put that as your Instagram uh, profile I probably picture. will. You'd or attract. you can just do like a big giant mouth like that. That is fun. Mm -hmm. Now, what they call it face swap because you could also swap with another person. Yeah, should we try to do that? We did, we did, and we have we have the video. We also have the photo. Do you want me photo. to show you the video? Because I think I put it on my uh, system. Uh, and I have a little photo too. Of, okay. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> how do computers work? I tweeted mine out, so let's go I to Twitter. I Facebooked mine. <laughs> uh, uh, it would probably be in my photos, wouldn't it? Here we go. There we are, you and I. <laughs> There's That's something better. just ungodly weird well i think that. that we there's a nose issue like i think that's partly there's your a, nose there's and there's a partly nose my issue nose. you want to see the video i made yes okay get ready because you're not going to believe it so here we are getting ready it's it took it, a long time it, it's surrounding my face surrounding <laughs> megan's face it has to be what the what the heck is that that is just creepy as sin. So it's 99 cents yeah. for this. Yeah. Um, it's well worth it. No in-app purchases? No in-app purchases. Wow. No, and I spent... Uh, wow. Here's where my identical twin switched their faces, which isn't But as, they're identical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did they? What did they think of that when they did <laughs> they that? They thought it was funny because... They yeah. know what they look yeah. like. Yeah, there's a hair issue there. Well, that I recognize. Mm -hmm. I don't think... Uh, Milo has hair growing out of his um, Yeah, ears. so there's so many options. Literally um, endless fun with this. It is so much fun. Cents. We were laughing when we did this. Um, you can be Obama. You can be... So they have a, a broad range. Or can you, can you just take a picture of anybody and, well, and use it? Um, oh, you're Donald. Go. I'm Donald Trump. I mean, purse your lips a little bit. Oh, God, that's creepy. So this is a lot like the Snapchat uh, Yeah, thing. it has some Snapchat-ish. Yeah. Um, here, let's... They got well, snowman, a Lincoln. Oh, you're pre the president. That's a mask of Obama on my face. That's pretty presidential. Can I'd you? Say. Yeah. Take that. Here comes the chief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So ninety nine cents face swap live. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say about except it except that it. it's amazing. It's a little finicky. I mean, this makes it look like it's really easy, but it's a little finicky if you have two people. Wow. Lighting issues, too. Yeah. I think, well, for this sure. is, yeah, it's hard to do on the set. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So this is like that Snapchat thing, only you get a lot more uh, with your right. thing. Yeah. So I read this in the, in the, you saw it, I guess, on Friday? I read I it did, in the yeah. news this morning, and mm -hmm. I thought, this is a joke. Donald Rumsfeld, former, uh, he was the Secretary of Defense under, uh, George, H. W., under George W. Bush. 
Uh, he was the guy who said there are unknown knowns, there are known knowns, there are knowns we don't know and we don't know and we know the knowns. He said all those things, <laughs> just like that. Um, it turns out that while he was busy being, he's also a member of Congress for a long time, while he was busy being a politician, he also was playing a lot of cards and he was taught a solitaire game by a diplomat who the diplomat said it was taught, he was taught by Winston Churchill the Prime Minister of England during World War II. Mm. And so it's, they call it Churchill Solitaire, and Rumsfeld worked with the company and actually developed this into the most singularly addictive solitaire program you've ever played. We'll get the little historical newsreel at the beginning. Victory at all costs. So this isn't like regular solitaire? Um, it is, well, you know, solitaire, as you probably know, has many different Versions. rules. Yeah. Let's skip here. Um, now, I should say it's free to try, but you're probably going to end up paying $4.99, and I'll tell you why. If you use the free one, you get 200 deals. You can play it 200 times. That's a lot, mm -hmm. maybe more than you'd ever need. Uh, and you get also this campaign, which is kind of uh, fun. I'm going to skip this. I'll restore my purchases in a bit, but the campaign is kind of fun. It's a good way to learn this game. They've really put a lot of work in. I think, you know, Donald uh, Rumsfeld actually turns out to be a pretty good app programmer. He's put a lot of work into this. And so you get these campaigns. Now, I'll restore. I guess i got to restore purchases now. We'll go ahead. Because I did immediately pay $5.99 for it. Let me play the easy game, and we'll show you how, how this works. So it's kind of complicated. First of all, you're playing with two decks, which makes it a lot okay. harder. Okay. This is called the victory row. You need to get all 104 cards to the victory rows. You see there's room for all eight aces. Remember, we've got two decks. Uh, and then you've won, okay? There's also something that really makes this devilishly hard. They call it the Devil's Six. These are six cards that can't be played on the playing field. This is a kind of standard solitaire board. They can only be played to the victory rows mm. at the right. So... If you don't get all six of them over here, you're not going to win the game. Uh, and the main playing surface is, as most people are familiar with, a typical solitaire. It really is good. You can play on the iPhone, uh, but it really is good on the iPad. If you're a serious solitaire player, you probably already have an iPad. Uh, this is nice. You can buy a hint. When I first started playing it, I did buy some hints to kind of get my feet wet. There's even an undo. But these both are for sale. And so even mm. after you pay five bucks for the full edition, which has unlimited hands, if you still want hints and undos, you may actually spend a little bit more money. I'm not going to do that because I want to be honest. So right away, I see that I can play this ace over to the victory row. And we're going to do that right away. Now I'll need a two of spades and a two of clubs to com continue that stack there. And you've played solitaire mm -hmm. before where you... You put the red jack on the black queen and the black, and on uh, you know this this is solitaire. Everybody's played this before. Um, and then when you run out of moves on the board, you will you can deal more cards from well, you the got deck. Three, three on the four. Where's red, the three? Red three on the black four. This is one of the things I hate about playing solitaire. Oh, by the way, now I can play that to the the victory mm -hmm. row and move my king off of here. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, I don't have to explain how this works. You, you've probably played enough uh, actual solitaire. This is surprisingly fun and addictive. Eight on the nine. Eight on the nine. <laughs> right, and right. don't ever Eight play this with anybody uh, because they're going to do what Megan what I'm is doing. doing. Yeah. Is that what you hate? No, Playing I solitaire? Hate on no, you know, TV? it's really fun. I don't, I'm not a huge solitaire fan. I mean, it's not one of those things where I've got a few minutes, I'm going to deal out a deck. Especially if you have to use real cards. It's a lot of work. And it yeah, takes a lot of space. Yeah, that is a lot of work. This is a great iPad game. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. really compelling and fun. And by the way, if you stop playing the game, it remembers where you left off. So you can play it for a few minutes and start over again. Did you see a good move for me? Let me get a hint, okay? Well, the seven on the eight. Oh, the six on the seven oh, the there. the six on the seven and the yeah. seven Yeah, the and then the seven on the eight. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So the easy one is actually playable and easy because they've arranged it so that there, there'll be lots of moves that you can make. Um, and, I, you know, I won my first game on the easy mode, which, which if you've ever played solitaire, it's rare that you actually win a game, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is there anything I can do here? I don't think uh, so. I don't see anything. Let's see I if I get a hint anything. here. Nope, it says i got to pull from here. Now, it's not going to fill in on kings, right, because those are the top. So it's going to fill everywhere else but the kings. These two kings, 
these rows will not get filled. Aces you play immediately, and you start building these stacks. Gosh, this is, I mean, uh, it's probably not so fun watching somebody play solitaire. Not if you can't, not. Wait, why is the three on the queen? What happened? Did I miss something? Because we dealt this out of the deck oh, here. Oh, Unfortunately, okay. it screwed me up, right? Oh. So now that queen is, is a little bit blocked. Oh, That's all right. I'll be, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I feel good. I feel good. I feel confident. It's a, called Churchill Solitaire. It's free to try. You get 200 hands, 200 random hands. That's not too bad. I like the campaign because that kind of works you through it. It does do a timer and scoring. It tells you your career score and you even get a little ranking on here. Uh, and, you know, uh, I... Donald Rumsfeld got it from a guy who got it from the greatest guy of all, Winston uh, yeah. Churchill. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is actually, it's totally addictive. I think so, I have a picture of Winston Churchill here on my iPad. That's you as Winston Churchill. There, yeah. there we go. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> we will fight them on the beaches. We will fight them in the trenches. We will fight them in the solitaire. Um, oh, and this is fun, too. You look stumped. Should, oh, do you want to keep playing mm -hmm. or you want to surrender? No! Never, I'll never, never surrender. Never surrender. Blood, sweat, never toil, surrender. and tears. Never surrender. Never surrender. Do you like well, solitaire? I do love solitaire. I feel like Sharon might like solitaire. She mm -hmm. seems like a solitary yeah, type. she's not, but um, I love it. <laughs> it's fun my mother-in-law loves it your mother -in -law. not my mother mrs but, maroney yes um i'm not a huge solitaire fan and i found that i was late for work today mm, for one good reason is, i had to finish that game that is trouble churchill solitaire the three of clubs uh see look how the chat room is kib kibitzing now <laughs> three of clubs uh no i can't go anywhere i don't have a red four there huh is that, oh no you gotta have a red four see since you alternate colors, right? You've played sol Have you not played solitaire? <laughs> well, there's a four right under the six, but that shouldn't be there either. Well, no, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, in that, fact, that I've screwed hard. myself up right. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so what I hope is that I'm going to get a black five soon so I can access the nines. And then if I, I still don't have a red ten to move that nine over, but you get the idea. You can buy your way out of the problem. How, how would you do that? But isn't that what you can buy hints? You can buy hints. Oh, but Let's see what the hint says says, put the three, you dummy. And then once you do the three, you can yeah. do the four. Right. Oh, I did the wrong four. I should have done that problems. four. Pay your way Let's out. Let's undo that sucker and do that four. Now I get access to the ten. Mm. Still doesn't help me, does it? No, How about this really three on that? That doesn't improve anything. Well, you, you know You get what? the idea? Do you enjoy it? Are you loving it? Is I it a great it. game? I'm is it a game you'd like to play more? Yes, it is. Try it free, but I think you're probably going to end up spending five bucks pretty darn quick because I did. All right, that's it. That's all Churchill. we've got. Um, you know, it's called Netflix and Churchill. <laughs> next time. It's not called that. No? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, next week, uh, I was thinking we might do graphic designer apps. That's what <laughs> Another I thing we can't do, because yeah. we have no talent. Right, uh, we'll, we'll find, find a graphic somebody designer who can, draw. who can, yes. Renee Ritchie's a graphic designer. Yeah. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact. But I always love feedback about what you want to see, so that we have more ideas of what... Doing the yeah, yeah. We want. want to give you what you want. So please yes. email us. How can they mm -hmm. do that? They can email us. Well, they can just email me at Megan at twit.tv. That's yeah. the easiest way. Or you way. can call and leave a message mm -hmm. or make a YouTube video and send us a link. There's all sorts of ways. Yeah, voicemail, We'd voice love video. getting you on the mm -hmm. show if we can. We do, yes. All the ways. 757-504-IPAD is the phone number. 757-504-IPAD. Yeah, that's 4723. Okay. IPad and is. do you answer that phone if I call? I answer it okay. all the time. Even Hello. iOS Today. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for coming. We'll uh, see you next week. We record the show 1 p.m. Pacific and watch live or download us on your favorite yeah. podcast machine. We'll see you next time on iOS. Oh, don't forget oh, to yes. sign up for the Twit email newsletter. Almost forgot. I forget every time. Uh, we just started it. First one went out. Actually, did it go out, Glenn? It, I got it. Yes, I, yes. I received did it. Because I didn't box. get it. I got it. Oh, I probably. Did so you if you didn't get it, it, I did. <laughs> yeah, you won't get it if you don't subscribe. <laughs> If you don't get it, check your spam uh, box. Uh, and if you add, what is the email address? Newsletter at twit.tv? Inside twit at twit.tv. If you add that to your contact list, it might, makes it unlikely, less likely you'll get spam. And twit.tv you know, slash newsletter to get it. Yeah, twit.tv slash newsletter. And, uh, you know, it's, just, it's, it's a short little newsletter. We're only going to send it to you once a week. We won't send any other mail. We won't send, sell, sell your email address. It's just a way of letting you know what's coming up so you know ahead of time. Right, you can see the guests on Patrick today. Patrick and Shannon. Right, you'll know more than I do. Things I should like have that. checked the newsletter. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on iOS Today. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ooh.